everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to another episode of Angel Talk. So today's video, buckle up. I know, you know, we know that so many of us fall into this horrible pattern of lazy girl. I don't think you're lazy though. I think you lack a idea of where to even start to go from lazy girl to productive girl. Hi everyone, this podcast is dedicated to giving you all the best tips and advice for literally everything and more. I'm learning as I go through life and I know you are too. I was so inspired to talk about a topic that I personally actually been recently, oddly enough, struggling with. Like I know I'm usually a very productive person, but I just kind of fell off for a while. Like I was like, shit, I'm not doing what I probably should do. Like I dropped off with working out. I started getting more anxiety and I started kind of getting like the crippling anxiety where I didn't even know where to begin with. And then I had so much shit that I needed to do. I had other stuff I had to get done. And I'm like, oh my God, like this isn't me. I think some of y'all know that when you get into a position where you're so overwhelmed, you're like, where do I even begin? How do I get my life back together? And so I want to talk about how I'm essentially figuring that out and how we're going to do this together. First of all, to get this out of the way, there's no shame in this. It happens. We are physically incapable of being perfectly productive all the time. Like I cannot comprehend someone doing that. You're going to burn out something bad's going to happen. And it's just, we're human beings. Okay. We can't be perfect. So sometimes we need a reset or sometimes we just need some guidance on where to begin so we can get back into that productive state. And that could honestly really range for you. You could be somebody who wants to start working towards goals. Maybe you just want a better, all healthier routine, whatever that is. I want to start talking about how we can get back to that. So the backstory on this for me is personally, I struggle with anxiety and depression. It's a lot, right? I also, sometimes I struggle with focusing, like genuinely I struggle with focusing. And when I have so much going on, sometimes things start get debilitating. It's like I need more to get myself out of my own head and not be so overwhelmed with everything. Sometimes I'll be so focused on things that are in the far future. I'll be overthinking of something that's just way too much. I just let myself go. So I want you to acknowledge that it's okay. Shit happens. You're not a bad person for losing your drive or your motivation or your routine. I know there's this very toxic hustle culture that exists where whoever it is is pushing people to just be super duper productive all the damn time. And if you're not, you're an awful person. We don't believe that here on this channel. Whatever you do, do not think that, throw that perspective out the window. And let's actually talk about how I was able to start getting myself back to a better routine, how I'm actually doing it right now, funny enough as I'm filming this video and all the steps to make my life feel 10 times better. So the first thing I need to talk about is establishing the problems first. So what are the things that are causing problems to make you lack motivation, or maybe you're falling into that lazy girl routine, whatever the hit case may be. That could be you're on your phone way too much. I will doom scroll. I will. It's so bad. I will doom scroll all the fucking time on TikTok and then I will catch myself. So I will start digging into a video or a topic that I want to film on my main channel or something. And then all of a sudden it's like I, I lose track of what I'm even doing to begin with and I'm just doom scrolling or I will do that even at the end of the night. That's a problem. Maybe you have a lack of routine. If you don't have a set routine or maybe some kind of foundation in place that might actually make it and enable you to not be doing anything productive. Or another example of this could be you don't have enough to look forward to. I didn't set things in place to look forward to. So it was harder for me to get the motivation to get work done to begin with because I wasn't prioritizing also making sure I had dedicated fun that I had to be there for to show up to. So I was just going to screw off. And especially for people who also are working from home, I'm sure y'all get this, right? This is overwhelming. You're the one that creates your own schedule and it's just, it's intense. So find what the problem is. Establish what the issues are and keep that in mind as we move on to the next step, which is creating a plan. So I actually like to call this my where, what to do when I don't know what to do plan. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I wrote this down on my notes. So I will actually put a little bit of an example on the screen right over here. If those of you are actually watching it or if you're listening, I will just kind of describe it. So the entire plan that I wrote down was essentially something that I can go to when I feel too overwhelmed and I don't know where to begin. I'm a huge visual learner and I am someone who likes to see everything in front of me. So I also survive off of lists and seeing things in front, calendars, everything written down. Like that is super important for me. So I started thinking that, okay, if I hit one of those points where I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Where do I even begin? This all feels so big. I noticed that it didn't feel as big or as scary when I started writing down my to-do list or everything that I needed to get done. So I was like, why don't I put that perspective into making a game plan that I could always go to if I hit this kind of rut where I'm stuck and I don't know what the fuck to do. So here are several of my categories that I have in this list. I have work, house, self, 
mental health. I have organization and extras, things that I might forget about that are in my typical everyday routine that I might have to kind of remember if that's something that I need to work on. For example, this entire first list is for work. It talks about work month prep. So for me, in order to get my life together, I need to prepare for the next month and start doing everything to get myself super organized. Because if I'm really organized with work, it's hard for me to get off track. Next thing is my calendar, getting ready for the month. So putting my calendar together and making sure that's good to go. That's another thing that's really important for me. And I'm able to, again, keep track. But I start adding whatever I need to in that work category. And I might add if I think of something later, but just basic things of like, okay, Bella, when it comes to your work, make sure you're sticking to your routine. You have to do your work month prep, make sure you're good to go, and then calendar ready for the month. Then house, this part is actually like my entire living space. I have to have everything clean. I literally need to have my house good to go and clean. I will lose my marbles if I don't. It's like way too much for me. But I have a list of everything I need to do because when I'm cleaning sometimes and if I'm overwhelmed, I will jump from room to room and I will like spread myself too thin. So I will be cleaning the kitchen and doing the dishes. And then I will go upstairs. I'm like, wait, I think I might need more dishes. Oh, wait a minute. I need to start the laundry because I see clothes on the floor. So then I just like, I just jump all over. So I made a list of like, okay, Bella, when it comes to the kitchen, this is what we're doing. These are the things you have to do. And I go through my checklist. I mark it all off. I get it done. And I follow that. And I made a list for every single room in my house. So that way I know what I got to do per, and it's not so overwhelming. And I stick to it because sometimes I need to force myself to stay there. So the next part is self. So those are things to kind of help yourself out when it comes to maybe self-care, working out, whatever the case may be. So if you're really, really overwhelmed and you're like, I feel gross. I What the fuck? What am I supposed to do? This is what I do. The things that make me feel better and make me feel like my life is put together is starting up a workout routine. My workout routine is so fucking basic right now. I actually listen and watch Pilates. I will actually pop up the channel right over here. I will actually like learn a little bit more so I can build my own routine. But but Pilates classes are the way to go. I they're, Sometimes they're 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Sometimes they're 30 minutes or 35. I at least try and do one a day. And it's right when I wake up. I am like, it's simple. It's not horrible. It's not exhausting. It's not kicking my ass, but it makes me feel good. And it's some form of movement. Another thing is I do like self tanner. I always feel better when I self tan. I have in a hot second. I literally look like I'm almost matching my couch. That's nice. But <laughs> that is um, I like things I write down that are self care that make me feel better. I Manny and Patty facial waxing bikini waxing, the everything shot where I scrub and shave it all. Those kinds of things are what I would write down in yourself to be like, all right, what do I physically need to make my body feel better? Because every time I always feel better when I always do that deep clean shower and then I clean my house. It's like, okay, now I can work on the rest of the stuff. It just keeps me feeling good and I know what I need to do and what my, I need to do to make my body feel better. But I also write down what I need for my mind. So for mental health, I actually write down meditation for 10 to 15 minutes if needed. Needed. That's another option. I have another example of a mental health check in, a breakdown of my anxious thoughts, slow down to get back in control. That's another thing that I uh, have actually talked about on previous episodes. But if I'm feeling like really overwhelmed and I don't know where to go or what to do, I have to slow down for a second and be like, all right, you're anxious. There's a lot going on in your head. What are those thoughts? So I kind of break down my thoughts to make them a little bit more reasonable. So if I'm like anxious, let like, let's pretend that you're anxious about your work. Oh my God, I'm going to fail. Okay. Well, why? Like, why is that thought there? Is there an actual logic behind it? Is there any evidence to prove that thought? Or is it just you freaking out? Like genuinely think of counter evidence to prove that that thought is incorrect. Because many times we can pull apart our overthinking and realize that it is overthinking and fucking insane. So I do that as much as I can if I'm really struggling and that's kind of how I help myself out. Medication refills. So that's actually another thing I put into the mental mental health category because a lot of my medications help me function better as a human being. So that's something that some people you forget. So I put that in there and then therapy appointment. If you go to therapy and if you're feeling really overwhelmed, maybe it might be a good time to book a therapy appointment. I also even maybe will hang out and talk with a friend of mine and be like, girl, I need to let something off my chest. I got a lot going on. And sometimes venting and talking to another person, whether that's a therapist or your friend is going to just make you feel better and like sometimes you just gotta bitch right like that is exactly how I am sometimes I have to bitch about something that doesn't mean I don't know what to do that doesn't necessarily mean I am still like screwed it's just like I have to bitch and let it out I'm gonna feel better and I got a game plan I need a bitch that I got the game plan and we'll be good to go that is another thing I do you can put other things in your list like your pets your children your family whoever the case may be and just write little things of like here's what to make sure I'm doing for them if you get super all over the place like little things to just make sure 
sure that you're doing everything you're supposed to, but putting it in front of yourself, it doesn't look as big. Like this list to me does not look that scary or bad at all. And I'm using it right now to get myself back together and in check. I literally love it. And then extras like uh, car appointments, doctor's appointment. Maybe you have to clean your car. Maybe you have some things that you're looking forward to. Maybe you have dinner with your family, whatever the case may be, just little things like that that you can write down and be like, oh shit, wait, I do have something like that. So having and writing out a game plan like this and consciously sitting down and be like, all right, every aspect of my life, what do I need to make sure I am getting done and slowly go through it. Start small, start with one category and build your way back up. A couple other things that I recommend is yes, decluttering, create a calendar to use notes to stay on top of everything. Just write everything down as much as you can because then knowing what the hell you got to do to go from being unproductive to productive as hell, it's not going to look as scary. It's not going to look as bad. And you now have a game plan of what you need to do to get to that point. So another thing that I think is really important for people who are trying to get into a better position with productivity is look at people that inspire you. I actually do this a lot. And this is why I like utilizing YouTube is I try and watch other creators that one are have nothing to do with what I'm doing, but other people that just inspire me that are like fellow women. So there's other creators that literally they're just existing, right? But I love the way they live. I love how productive they are. And even, even if it's not even real, let's play the pretend game of maybe they only show all the wonderful things in their life. Either way, I'm using that as inspiration. Why? Because I want to get to a point where I am wildly productive and I got my shit together and I can do all these things. Yes, I want to be that Pilates princess that eats well and has her shit together and has wine nights with friends and has dinner dates with her partner and just has a flawless fucking week. That is exactly what I want. So I use it for inspiration because watching other people succeed, in my opinion, makes me motivated. Now, I know some people don't really feel that way and some people will like get intimidated by looking at that. No, I, I don't know. We're not doing that, y'all. You need to look at other people's successes and get inspired and be like, I'm going to be that someday. And that's why I want you to do that is because you're getting this motivation, seeing other people succeed and we're turning it into motivation for ourselves. I do that all the time and I get so excited because I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to be in that position. And in order for me to be in that position, I have to do X, Y, and Z to be able to get into where I want to be at life, whether that is successful in my job, relationships, friendships, anything. I can't expect anything to change if I don't do it, but I need motivation and inspiration to get myself excited for that change. And again, change is going to be hard work. Anything worth having is going to be hard work, but you need to have that motivation and fuel and your why to keep pushing you through. So that way it's easier and more inspiring and exciting to even get to that goal in the first place. I like watching creators who are in positions in life that I want to be in because it gives me inspiration and I feel better doing that. So another way that you can get inspiration and just offer more for yourself is figuring out your learning style and find out what inspires you. If you're someone who is more of like an audio learner and that works best with you, like listening and picking stuff up like that is really beneficial for you, then a podcast is probably going to be your best date. And that's probably why maybe listening to my videos on YouTube or Spotify might work the best for you. So maybe you're more visual like me. Honestly, you're probably going to eat up something like watching a video or maybe making a vision board. This is again how we're going to go from being stuck, unmotivated, not doing anything to being productive and getting everything done and more. So this is my best advice and I swear this has changed my life and has brought me back into reality is making a vision board. You know, I watch YouTube videos for inspiration. I do that, but I also have made my own vision board. I literally cannot yap about a, a fucking vision board enough. I see it all the time and I put it in a position where I have to see it and I'm constantly like, okay, Bella, if I want to hit this goal, I can't hit that goal if I don't do anything. If I doom scroll on TikTok, nothing's going to happen. If I sit here on my ass not working, nothing's going to fucking happen. If I bitch and complain that I'm not at my goal. Well, guess what? I'm just bitching, complaining about not being at my goal. I'm not at my goal yet. Like I'm wasting my time. So if I see that vision board, it's like a quick reminder of, hey, this is what we're working for. So make a vision board if you're a visual person so you can have additional inspiration. Or even if you're not, just having extra stuff around in a place that you frequent the most is gonna be really beneficial because you're constantly reminded of something you are working towards. And it doesn't have to be crazy. Like mine, I got a lot going on there, right? Whether it's just aesthetically pleasing or a few goals that you really have, make something that is important to you. Or even another thing I've seen some creators do is they will actually make a vision board and put it on their phone screen, their lock screen and home 
home screen. Oh my God, I love that. I actually have done something similar. My main channel subscriber count goal, my second channel subscriber count goal for 2024 and a few others. And pretty much I just tell myself literally on this, you can't expect anything to happen if you don't work your ass off. So you need to get the fuck up and do it. And that motivates me. That makes me feel better because every time I open this phone, always there. It's always there to remind me, hey, you want something to happen for you? You want to go from being unmotivated to motivated? This right there, your goals are your motivation. What you want to happen is your motivation. How you want to live, that's your motivation. And if you want anything to change in life, well, we can't sit here complaining that it's not there. We have to do something about it. In order for me to get to anywhere I want in life and become that girl, become that productive girl, I have to push myself to get into a position to where I am that girl. I have to make things happen. I have to set myself up for success. And that is going to mean having a game plan, having additional inspiration and motivation, and knowing that if I want to get from being stuck, laying in bed, just absolutely uncomfortable and miserable, to being the best version of myself, I have to get up and do something. And when it comes to making goals, I really think you need to make realistic goals to start off with and find out what motivates you to hit those goals. So if you're having a goal of, okay, I need to have a bit of a workout routine. Don't go nuts and be like, wow, okay, so I need to be lifting crazy amounts of weights in the gym, going every single day of the week. Pause, Bethany, we cannot be doing that. That's way too much. Have realistic goals, start small. And I hate how society has made it to where small goals are almost inferior. And I think that's so fucking stupid. That also prevents people from starting goals or starting in the first place. I hate that. Small goals are goals to begin with. Like that's it. And again, who's to say that they are small? They're big for you. They're very important for you. Start with something simple that is achievable and easy for you to do and then work your way up because too many people overlook and hi, I have literally done this before, overloaded with all the goals and things that you wanted to accomplish and then you got too overwhelmed and it was too big and you were like, fuck, I can't do anything. Mm -mm. Start small, start with a few or maybe start with one, but start very small and work your way up and you're gonna feel more accomplished when you start hitting those goals that are realistic and then you can expand what you can be capable of. If that's a workout routine, if that's maybe a realistic goal for your job, maybe if that's a goal when it comes to dating, hell if I know, whatever goal it is and getting yourself out there, maybe Maybe it's trying to make more friends. Maybe it's being more confident. Maybe it's having a better routine. Finding things that can get you motivated and set goals that are realistic are gonna get you quite literally even more motivated because you keep accomplishing them and progressing throughout what you want. So my final reminders with this from going from being unproductive to very, very productive is at the end of the day, the only person I personally believe is stopping you from this is yourself. If there's a will, there is a way. If you want something real bad, you have got to go at it. And you have to, first of all, acknowledge where the problem is, whether that's you're really stuck and it's your mental health, please seek help. If you are just totally sticking to doom scrolling and it's not doing anything for you, you're putting energy into something that is not doing you good, that's not giving you anything at all besides making you stuck in bed, or whether you're like questioning if you're even capable of your goals or this is all too much, find a realistic way of making it happen. If my good goofy ass can do all this stuff and more with my job and my life. And if I have moments where I fall into unpro unproductivity and then I get back, you surely can too. All right. Anyone is capable of it. Sometimes you just need some guidance on where to go. Again, make a game plan, establish your goals, make realistic goals, find inspiration, be surrounded by things that get you excited about life and what you want. And you have got this. So that was it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to leave a five-star review on Spotify. I would greatly appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.